Greetings gentlemen, ladies, old school game snob here. In today's video I'm going to follow up my previous video on how to uh, possess a pawn with a line trace. And uh, in this video we're going to learn how to get back out of the vehicle uh, possessed. Okay, so let's take a look. I will link the first video in the description in case you missed it, but basically in the first video we got as far as here. This little animation setup part. So this is what we're going to do first today. What we need to do is create a pawn reference object variable. Basically what you need to do is variable type of pawn object reference. Okay, so you got that. I got mine right here. Uh, what we're going to do first is set that pawn object uh, from, from our self variable because we're inside of our... our oh, and by the way, Hero is my main character. Sci-Fi Buggy is my vehicle. Just so you guys know which what, what I'm referencing here. Uh, but inside my hero blueprint, my main character blueprint, I'm going to set self as the uh, pawn reference. And the reason we're going to do this is so that once we are in our buggy, in our vehicle, we know which uh, pawn to then return the player to when they want to get out of the, out of the buggy, basically. So we're just going to set that uh, self pawn reference as self. And then what we're going to do is cast to our vehicle, in my case, sci-fi buggy. Uh, and now in my sci-fi buggy, I also have a, a, a another pawn object reference called driver. All right, so I just want to update the the pawn object the the pawn object reference called driver in in my vehicle. I want to update that with with uh, basically self. I want to update that with the player pawn that we're currently in that we're about to possess into the vehicle. I want to update that into my vehicle um, um, pawn so that it knows who the driver is and who to kick out later when it's time for the player to get out. So basically to do that, we cast to sci-fi buggy, our vehicle, using get player pawn. And then as sci-fi buggy, we are going to set the driver variable with the self pawn reference. All right, so I just set the driver variable over in my sci-fi buggy blueprint with the pawn reference. So I know who's in the, basically the, the sci-fi buggy the vehicle buggy, the blueprint now knows who's the who the driver is, and they can access the driver <clears throat> from this uh, driver variable. All right, so that's that's it for the player character, the, the the hero part. And now let's head over to the vehicle part. And this whole section here <clears throat> is all just getting out of the vehicle. All right, so this is what we're going to look at. Uh, Okay, on key press E, what I'm first going to do is add an actor local offset of 1000Z that just shoots the driver, and like I say, this is our driver variable that, that, that we're now going to be using a bunch of times. That just shoots the driver into the air. You could do this a little differently if you wanted. You could offset them to the right of the car. You could offset them, you know, not a thousand up, not as, you know, you could, you could offset them however you like, but this is basically just to shoot the character out of the car, avoid clipping issues, that sort of thing. So you can adjust that however you like, but that's how to do it. Add actor local offset. All right, so from there, I'm also going to detach my driver from actor. Uh, basically this, uh, in, our, in our first video, we attached our driver to the car, right? In our first video, we attached the driver to the car. As you can see, they're in the car. And in this video, we wanna get, you know, detach them <clears throat> from, from the car. And then that's how you do that. Uh, also, location rule, rotation rule, scale rule, keep world. This will put them at the uh, at the uh, location wherever they are, basically. Where, where, wherever they're getting out of the car, that's where they will be. Um, we're going to now unpossess our player contro uh, controller, unpossess the car that we're in using the get <coughs> player controller as the target. We are also going to then possess the driver again. We're going to repossess the hero character. So we're going to do that just by uh, putting driver into the in pawn part and get player controller into the target part. <clears throat> from here, we are going to cast back to our hero character from we're using our driver as our object. We'll cast back to them. And what we're going to now do is set the capsule, the hero's uh, collision capsule. And that is actually here. I've called mine hero capsule but it's just your capsule component, right? It's just this little capsule that you've got around that affects your collision. <clears throat> uh, basically, uh, this uh, contains all of the collision information for my character. Uh, in this case, the I have it default set as pawn collision. 
Uh, and what we're going to do here is we're going to set the collision profile name to be Pawn. All right, and actually one thing I should mention is that I did update in my hero character, for those of you who are following from the first video, I did update the collision, prof uh, collision uh, we set this to no collision using a slightly different node, but I changed that in my hero character to set collision profile name to no collision, and again, we're just getting that no collision uh, profile from, from here. No collision, of course, has no collision, so the character will go into the car without clipping with it and uh, creating some really weird uh, physics. So I've just got my hero capsule, like I say, just a capsule component that I renamed to hero capsule. I renamed my hero, ca uh, sorry, I hero capsule put into there to first set no collision, and now we want to give that collision back <clears throat> to our hero capsule. So basically, from cast to hero, uh, using driver, we're going to drag out of that node, out of this little blue node here, right? So if this is the first time you've cast to, uh, you, you need to make sure to drag it from here, from the as hero part, or whatever yours is, as third person character, or whatever. Uh, and now we're going to, what was it called? Hero capsule, right? We're going to get hero capsule. Uh, yours might just be called capsule, but we're going to get hero capsule, right? And it's going to look like that. And we're going to plug that into the target for our set collision profile. I'm setting the collision profile back to pawn, so that means I'm setting my hero collision capsule back to pawn. Uh, also, by the way, I'm setting my driving variable boolean to false. <clears throat> uh, again, you'll. Uh, this means that the character will no longer play the driving animation that we set up in the first video, so I'm just setting that back to false. And lastly, I'm setting the actor rotation back to 0, 0, 0. And again, in, in our first video, we set the actor rotation to 15, but this is important because if you don't do this, your character is not going to be able to detect the ground, and it's going to slide along the ground and be really funky. This took me a while to figure out, but make sure to set your actor rotation <clears throat> back to zeros. And I think that's it, guys. I think that's... Uh, that's the whole sequence, so hopefully that helps. Um, and there we have it. Let me see. I'll show you one more time how we're looking. Like I say, from the complete beginning to start, we're shooting around looking for something up a pawn to possess with our line trace. When we hit a pawn, we activate that pawn. We can drive around in it. Now, this is going to be really flexible for possessing any other pawns, any other kinds of vehicles. Right? When I jump out, I shoot, shoot up a thousand unreal units in the air, and uh, come back, I can run around. And uh, come back, I can run around. Everything's good, everything's merry, everything's bright. One additional update, guys. Uh, I changed the actor set rotation to set actor relative rotation. I, I noticed that the uh, character was getting in and out of the car, uh, kind of depending on which way the car was facing, but it would it would still align to its like original axis or something. So the relative rotation node seems to get the character in and out of the car uh, in the right location every time. I have mine tilted a little bit, so it leans back a little bit, and then that's your your kind of roll, uh, your kind of yaw, yeah, uh, left and right, yaw, yeah, yaw. Yeah. So I have mine set to 90 because he was kind of sitting in at 90 degrees in the wrong direction. So set actor relative location is what you're going to want, not set, set actor rotation. Sorry about that. Okay.